The year is 1997. After Damon Hill made history by becoming the first ever son of a world champion to himself win a driver's championship, there was shock as his contract at Williams was not renewed and he would move to the much slower Arrows team, which was trying to find new life under the leadership of Tom Walkinshaw. This left Jacques Villeneuve as the main man at Williams. After a stunning debut season which saw him finish second in the standings to Hill, surely he was the favourite for the title now. He was partnered at Williams by the promising German, Heinz Harald Frentzen. But there's another German we shouldn't rule out. Michael Schumacher, entering his second season with Eddie Irvine at Ferrari, has already won races for the Scuderia, and with Ross Braun and Rory Byrne joining them, could they go on better? Then there's Benetton. After a rare winless season in 96, they'll be determined to get back to the top step, the veteran pairing of Jean Lacy and Gerhard Berger raring to go. And keep an eye out for McLaren, sporting a new silver livery to showcase their partnership with Mercedes, the pairing of Mika Hakkinen and David Coulthard are getting stronger every season. And those are your main contenders for the 1997 championship, except there was another that nobody expected. A driver with one win under his belt driving for a new team that suddenly, unexpectedly, found himself qualifying high on the podium and even in the contention for race wins. Jacques Villeneuve even considered this driver a threat for the title until an accident at the Canadian Grand Prix broke both of his legs and he'd missed most of the season. But this isn't the real 1997. This is our 1997. And we're going to try and change things. Welcome to Formula 197. My name's Ash, this is The Outside Line, and we're getting justice for Olivier Panis. Yes, hello and welcome back. We're ready to do another classic F1 game playthrough. This time, Formula 197. This time with Olivier Panis. And we're ready to go. Before we get started with the championship, though, this is how we're setting up. Race length is at medium, so last time it was 15%. That gave us around about 10 lap races. Medium will give us 10 lap races every time, regardless. Skill setting, obviously expert. The hardest difficulty of the game. We've got neither steer or brake assist on, obviously not. Sessions, we've got practice, so basically we can do the full race weekend. Uh, damage and failures, I asked for your help with those from the pre-season video that we did. If you've not seen it already, go check it out. Uh, and based on how that race went and your suggestions, I've decided to uh, turn them both on. They could cause drama. Weather is variable, which as we discovered means the weather can change in a single session. Again, it could cause issues throughout the season. Uh, because we're just doing sprint races, tyre wear and fuel depletion are off. Tear off is a little visual thing if you're in cockpit mode, which we're not using, that's off. Uh, and flags are on, a nice welcome addition. So we'll see, uh, hopefully we can go without getting black flagged. Let's get into it. Go! And we are off and running, welcome to the Australian Grand Prix of 1997 at Albert Park. This is the second time Albert Park has hosted the Australian Grand Prix and the second time Australia has also been the season opener. This race will win the Race Promoters Trophy for the best run GP of the season. Interestingly enough, it also won it last year before, so it's two in a row for Albert Park, and it's three in a row for Australia because Adelaide won it the year before that, so F1 was loving going to Australia. Yeah, I know it's a risk having failures and damage on, but we did so well in our pre-season test race. And you know what? It means that we've got to be careful with our moves. We can't just go diving in. So yes, after a little bit of basically, you know, playing it cool, not revealing it too early, this is who I've gone for, Olivier Panis. Now I did a video a while ago on his career and that kind of covers a little bit of why I think he very much deserves to be a driver we should get justice for. There were lots of good candidates, to be fair. But obviously, go check out that video if you haven't. Your lap times are getting slower. What was that? Are you all right? Oh, wow. Oh, I've already dubbed this guy Jeff, even though his name is not confirmed. But he's definitely a spiritual precursor to Jeff because he's already annoying the shit out of me. As ever, I'm going to get some practice in. First qualifying session of the year, coming up next. 
So here we go, qualifying session number one of the season. It was an all-Williams front row. Villeneuve took pole from Hallingtown Frentzen, Michael Schumacher third. Uh, Jean Lacy kept force of habit. John Lacey came eighth, incidentally, but uh, Olivier Panis, who we are this season, uh, came ninth, and that is going to be our first target of the season. Now, last year's game mimicked the grid in dry conditions. I don't know what it does. I, I feel like it does what most F1 games do these days now, and just kind of makes a, a grid. So I, we'll see how much this follows real life. So our tactics for qualifying are gonna change in this game compared to the previous one because yes while it is the best time you can set out of 12 laps the time limit is in effect um, just like in real life it was an hour long qualifying session and this time the times will improve throughout the session so rather than do all 12 laps at the beginning of the session much like in real life I'm gonna have to do a bit of waiting in the pits for the times to improve so I can at least see a representative time of what I'm trying to beat Get a time set. And for the first time, <laughs> albeit cheaply, in one of these Formula 1 games, we're on provisional pole position. <laughs> Okay, so Villeneuve's gone quicker, we've gone into second. Oh dear, we are about to come across this Williams at the worst time. It's not bad, I mean, I know the times are improving, but we're, you know... We're in amongst it at the minute, and I quite like it. Part of me does want to stay out, I feel like it's quite a good lap. Four tenths down, back into second again. Right, this one definitely. I'm coming in and we'll wait. Ridiculous pit lane entrance. So while the clock runs down, Shinji Nakano in real life qualified 16th compared to Panis' ninth. And the reason I want to kind of draw attention to that is, I think that's one of the reasons why Panis deserves justice, is the fact that, yeah, the Prosmugen Honda package that was built from Ligier was really good, but it wasn't just the car, like, doing the work. The gap between him and Nakano was cavernous. And last year I was quite harsh on Gerhard Berger being our Ferrari teammate, but I feel like me and Shinji Nakano are gonna have a slightly rockier relationship this season. Another thing I wanna mention while other cars are setting their laps is you'll remember last season, one of the things that kind of cropped up completely organically was uh, we ended up raising some money for charity. A few different people started making predictions about what would happen, whether it was my performance as John Lacey or something that the AI did. Uh, Shark Chill started it off, then Racing Di Milano and Simon Core joined in as well and made predictions. Uh, and in the end, we ended up raising money for a charity called Laurier Sport for Good. And we ended up raising, they've got the total here, £24.27, or that's €28.43. It's because donations were made in different currencies, which is why it's slightly odd total. So I've put into that as well. I want to thank to everyone who got involved and did. It was completely unplanned and not something I was expecting, but it was lovely that it happened. If you want to make predictions about my performance or the performance of the AI drivers, whether it's for a single race or throughout the season, please feel free to do so. I'm not gonna kind of be, hold everyone to it because obviously, it's, you know, people want to give to charity, that's their business. But if you would love to use this as some kind of fun framework as happened last season, you are more than welcome to do so. And the chances are I'll get involved as well. A uh, different charity, it will be at the end of the season. Uh, I'll do some research, try and maybe find something associated with Olivier Panis or Alain Prost. And once again, thank you to everyone that got involved and donated. Let's go do the rest of our laps now. Here we go. As we cross the line, bam, lap five. So as you see, our in-laps and out-laps get taken off our total. So we it's not want to make a habit of going in and out of the pits. I'm being a little bit hesitant on the curbs. As I mentioned, we've got random mechanical failures on, and I got a tip, a comment on the revisit video we did saying, if I remember rightly, try and stay off the curbs. Don't be too liberal on them, because that can speed up or exacerbate any potential failures. Like a 
really good first sector. Because it was, but that was a terrible, terrible corner. Oh, it was an accident. Hit the analog stick in a weird way and ended up looking backwards by, <laughs> by mistake. So great first sector, terrible follow-up sectors. It is an improvement, I think. But I have no idea what to... <sighs> Busy waiting for a position to show up. He's up at the second split. If he keeps this up, he could be on pole. What? Sorry? Right. Don't do what you did last year and sh yourself just because it said you're up after the two splits. I don't understand how I've done that. But let's just keep going. Fortunately, the Williams is about to go in the pits and get out of the way. Can we slingshot out the final corner? It's a bit wide. Oh, no. Oh, I tried to throw everything at that final corner. What would that have been? So, that's not so bad. Villeneuve is on pole from Schumacher, Jean Alesi is third, Heinz Held Franzen is fourth, Ralph Schumacher fifth, Gerhard Berger sixth. We have qualified tenth. So we've just missed out on our objective by one place. That's not so bad. But that is also proof that what happens in real life has less of an impact. So what happened in the race in real life? Well, everyone was expecting after Williams won two, a Williams runaway. But it didn't happen that way. Jacques Villeneuve collided with Eddie Irvine and Johnny Herbert at turn one. Out. Frentzen uh, retired four laps from the end with a brakes issue, I think it was. And in the end, the race was won by David Coulthard. It was McLaren's first win since the 1993 Australian Grand Prix, which was won by Ayrton Senna. Michael Schumacher came second. Hakkinen was third. Berger was fourth. Olivier Panis finished fifth. Nicola Larini finished sixth. Shinji Nakano in the other Prost finished seventh. Now I know what you're thinking, you were slagging off Shinji Nakano. I was. And yes, he finished seventh. That's a really good result, but he was also the last of the non-retired cars. Only seven cars finished the race and uh, he was two laps down. The only car to not be on the lead lap. Which is not as good. This was also the race where famously Jean Alesi, driving for Benetton, ran out of petrol because <laughs> his radio wasn't working and he wasn't looking at the pit boards. As for our first objective of the season, let's go with real life. We made places in the pre-season race. I'm hoping we can do it again. Tenth to fifth doesn't seem completely unreasonable. We need to steer clear of any nonsense because we can lose wings. It's easier to lose wings on this game. It's more of a threat. Here we go then. I don't know why it keeps putting me on that view. I don't want it. I'm going to have to change that. But anyway, the lights are coming on. For the first time in 1997, they go out in Australia and we are off and running. Both McLarens ahead of us. We've held position. Let's not have any issues into turn one. I know they're going to kind of break slightly earlier. Oh, and I've really bottled out of that there because I didn't want to get any damage. But we're through safely. I think that's the most important thing at this point. To immediately try and get on the back of the pack ahead. Make places up while the cars are closer together and slowing each other down. The two West McLarens ahead. Ooh. And one's already got ahead of the Jordan. I think it's hacking in ahead of us. I think the Jordan is holding up hacking in, but we're about to be boxed in. Oh! Um, so Shinji Nakano's ninth, good for him. Now, you know what is actually quite interesting? So what is actually interesting at this moment is the car isn't undrivable. <laughs> it's probably slower, and I've stayed out probably when I shouldn't have done, because I was actually starting to catch up with that Benetton, as you saw. Shinji Nakano's all over me. <laughs> I've slagged, it, slagged him off and immediately he's going to try and overtake me. 
Yeah, I'm not sure whose fault that was. I'm not sure if I was too close to Jordan and he braked. I feel like I got hit by Hakkinen first. Yeah, I feel like Hakkinen hit me into the Jordan, but I'd have to watch the replay to see. We are still surprisingly quick for this final sector, but annoyingly, I know we can be quicker. Let's see how costly this really is. I've taken to the grass a bit there. See, 11th wouldn't be so bad. Come on, come on, come on. Crap. Well, this is a good start. Um, <laughs> and instantly, don't turn into me, Pedro Diniz. Oh, my word! Oh. Pooh came out. Pooh, come out. Jesus Christ. So I need to watch out for sudden heavily braking cars. That issue where sometimes I hit the analog stick and I accidentally start to look backwards is also something to kind of keep an eye on. Wonder if I can change my, um, my controller configuration for that. Come on. We're still taking on the car. Taking on the cars where straight line speed we should have the advantage over them. Uh, hang on. Is there smoke coming out the back of that car? There's smoke coming out the back of the car. This cannot be real. Literally, my worst nightmares about having damage and failures on and both of them could come true on round one of the new season. There we go, that's decent though. All we can do is try and drive the best we can with what we've got. And at the minute, coming back from 21st to hopefully soon be up to 13th, although the Jordan is now outpowering us into turn one. try and get through here again we keep getting the move to the outside and let's not do that again though <sighs> Ooh. sorry Giancarlo I do apologize need to try and get past these a little bit quicker Ooh. you are taking the pit, mate. Why does it keep switching to look backwards? I don't ask it to do that. You know what? I can't go to the back again. We are going to carry on <laughs> without a front wing and just see what we can do. It's all we've got left, really, in this race. So Shinji Nakano currently running higher than us. It's what I get for being all Billy Big Balls about Shinji Nakano. Sorry, mate. Apolo you know, I do apologise. You've done <laughs> done better than us. You've kept both your wings on. That's That's down. Uh, just give me give me a second just give me give me a second both incidents were questionable as if they were to my fault the first one i think hacking and hit me i realize that might be a i think ericsson hit his kind of job but i feel like that's what happened the second one as i'm breaking again it the view flicks backwards for no reason <laughs> and i lose another wing and then as we saw, the engine started to smoke from early on. So, Jacques Villeneuve wins the Australian Grand Prix from Heinz Held Frentzen. The Williams 1-2 that everyone predicted in real life has happened here. <laughs> Schumacher third, Irvine fourth, Jean Alessi in fifth, and David Coulthard in sixth. A DNF for Olivier Panis and Shinji Nakano. Don't know where he finished in the end, but probably better than us. And there's not really much to add in terms of the World Championship after round one because it will just be the places of the top six uh, in the points positions. I think that kind of gives us the scale of the challenge we're up against. Race pace seemed positive. We were going forward, but beyond my toes, 
and also work out why it kept looking backwards because that ain't it. <laughs> in the meantime, in the constructors, Williams fire themselves into an early lead as they did in our last season. Ferrari second, uh, Benetton third and McLaren fourth with the one point. And that is it for round one. So next time we go off to Interlagos to hopefully see some form of improvement. I mean, race pace was looking good. We were doing a really good drive and then a good recovery drive. But the dangers of damage and failures are the biggest obstacles that we have to overcome first. Shocking start, but hopefully I'll see you for the next one. Thank you so much for watching. It's great to be back doing another F1 playthrough. I hope you enjoyed it. And yeah, I will see you very soon for the next one. Thanks very much.